Researchers from Dartmouth College have created a pair of battery-free smart glasses that track your eye movement. The hope is to create more accurate graphic rendering and a better augmented reality experience. The solar-powered glasses include a microcontroller and a light sensing unit that uses near-infrared lights and photodiodes to see how your eye reflects light. The glasses infer pupil size and position to track rapid eye movements. Improvements are twofold, as the wearable can not only improve augmented reality, but it also ditches the clunky power supply. The prototype, I mean, is certainly do a little more aesthetic work, but you know, function before fit and form. The study was only conducted indoors because infrared light outdoors would saturate the light sensors in the current prototype. However, the researchers plan to tackle outdoor functionality problems with the second generation prototype, as well as continuing to improve rapid eye movement detection. Right now, the glasses are designed with the gaming industry in mind, but as the team improves eye tracking, the glasses could one day be used to identify health problems, like mental disorders, fatigue, and even assess clinical treatment effectiveness. Oh, and uh, you know, they'll also work on making it a little easier on the eyes. Infrared, right? A team of researchers from the University of Cape Town in South Africa has created the world's first bricks made out of human urine. The team calls them bio bricks, and yes, they do look like giant clumps of cat litter. The bricks are created using microbial carbonate precipitation, a process similar to the way that seashells are formed. The bricks could also be a waste recovery solution that is also more efficient. Traditional bricks have to be baked in a kiln at about 1400 degrees C. The bio bricks are created in room temperature molds. So how does it work? According to the researchers, it begins with urease producing bacteria that is added to sand. The urease breaks down the urea in urine while producing calcium carbonate through a chemical reaction. The carbonate cements the sand into the shape of the mold. What is interesting is that the strength of the brick is actually dependent upon how long you let the bacteria work. Previous work has sourced synthetic materials, but this is the first to tap humans. According to the researchers, urine is, quote, liquid gold, because the process could also be a boon for the commercial fertilizer industry. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are all byproducts of the bio brick manufacturing process. Up to 97% of the phosphorus in urine can be converted into calcium phosphate, which is important because the world's natural phosphate reserves are reportedly running dry. Next, the researchers will continue to test the bio brick strength, but they will also look to tap the other half of the natural resource. Right now, they're only using male urine and it's collected using these special urinals. Make sure to keep an eye on the researchers' work. Surely, you're in for a real treat. Infrared, right? Bartini is a Russian startup that presents yet another potential competitor in a quickly oversaturating flying car prototype landscape. I guess we're going more spaghetti wall with this one. The flying car is an electric vertical takeoff and landing or eVTOL design. The company has both two and four door seat designs and the team recently built a half scale prototype at the National University of Science and Technology's High Complexity Prototyping Center in Moscow. The design incorporates coaxial ducted blades that reportedly double the thrust of one meter engines. The prototype looks cool, and a video from earlier this year shows the team working on the blade design and the half-scale prototype in flight tests. But then the video shows Bartini CEO Ilya Konikov standing next to the flying car or air taxi, and I thought, man, that just looks too clean. You blow up the video, and bam, right there in the fine print, right there, keep it, zoom in, zoom in, there it is, computer-generated image, final product may vary. Just seems like an odd way for a startup to blow the marketing budget. The team wants to keep the aircraft small, about five by five meters with low noise, equivalent to a truck passing by, and panoramic views. As you can see, the cockpit is almost all glass. The CTO actually admits that he was inspired by Back to the Future, so it's no wonder that they threw on the DeLorean's Falcon wing doors as well. The flying car will only have a range of about 93 miles flying about 186 miles per hour on a 30 minute charge. Now that is total flight time, so the range could be significantly less, because you know, it's gotta go up and down. However, the aircraft is envisioned as an air taxi for in-town commutes. Bartini is part of the McFly, yeah, actually called the McFly, air taxi incubator, which is essentially trying to replicate Uber's success and business model, only in the sky. The plan is to have a flying car that can cross almost any city in 15 minutes, ready for the commercial market by 2020. 
Next, Bartini and the Prototyping Center will collaborate on a full-scale prototype. Hey, and you know what? Maybe get that one in the video and then like have him touch it. Not just look really close. Kind of off, but real good. Just like, this right here is the future of design. This right here is the future of design. Am I close? Where are you gonna put it? Ah, I tell you what, ah, that's real Russian steel right there. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.